This is the story of Hansel and Gretel by the Brothers Grimm. At the age of a forest lived a poor woodcutter and his wife, who was a spiteful woman, and her two children, Hansel and Gretel. They were very poor, so there was very often very little food on the table. And one day there was no food at all. Everyone went to bed hungry. And that night Hansel heard his mother tell his father, Husband, there are too many mouths to feed. You must leave the children in the forest tomorrow. Why, if I cannot abandon our children? There are wolves in the forest, said the poor woodcutter. But his wife made him agree to her evil plan. Hansel felt his heart grow icy cold. But he was a clever boy, and so he slipped out of the house and filled his pockets with shiny white stones. Now the next morning, they all rose early, and the children followed the father deep into the forest. He lit him a fire and told him he was going to gather wood and be back to collect him. He left him tears falling down his face. The day passed slowly. Hansel kept the fire going, but when night fell it grew very cold and he could hear all kinds of rustling under the shadowy trees. Gretel couldn't understand why her father had not come back to collect him, so Hansel had to tell her that her mother had told Woodward to leave them there deliberately. But don't worry, Gretel he said. I will leave his home, and in the moonlight he showed her the line of shiny white stones he had dropped from his pocket, one by one, as the father had led him into the forest. They were soon home, where the father greeted him with great joy, but the mother was not pleased. Though some time passed, they managed to survive with nearly very little to eat, but another came, day came when Hansel heard his mother demanding that the woodcutter leave him in the forest again. And when Hansel went to collect some more pebbles, he found the door locked and he couldn't get out. Now in the morning, the father gave them each a piece of bread and then led them even deeper into the forest than before. Now all day long, Hansel covered or comforted Gretel and told her that this time he left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead him back safely home. But when the moon rose and the children set off, there was not a breadcrumb to be seen. The birds had eaten every last one. There was nothing to do but to go to sleep and wait until the morning. The next day he walked and walked, but he saw nothing but trees. And the next day was the same. By this time they were not only cold and hungry, but deeply frightened. It looked as if they would never, ever be able to find a way out of the forest. But just as it was getting dark, they came to a clearing and there stood a strange house. The walls were made of gingerbread, the windows of fine spun sugar, and the tiles and roof were brightly striped sweets. Now Hansel and Gretel could not believe the look, and were soon breaking off bits of the house to eat. Then a little voice came from inside. Nibble, nibble, little mouse, who is that eating my sweet house? Out of the front door came a very old woman. She smiled sweetly at the children and said, Dear ones, you don't need to eat my house. Come inside, and I give you lots to eat, and you shall sleep in warm beds. Hansel and Gretel needed no second asking. They were soon tucked up, warm and full of hot milk, ginger biscuits, and apples. They both fell fast asleep quickly, but little did he know that they were in the worse danger than ever before. The old woman was a wicked witch, and she decided to make Gretel work in the kitchen, and worst of all, she planned to fatten Hansel up so she might eat him. Then the next morning, she locked poor Hansel into a cage and gave Gretel a broom and told her to clean the house from top to toe. In the evening, the witch fed Hansel a huge plate of chicken, but she only gave Gretel a dry hunk of bread. But once she was asleep, Hansel shared his meal with Gretel. So they lived for many days. The witch could not see very well. So every morning she made Hansel put his finger through the cage so she could tell how fat he was getting. But clever Hansel poked a chicken bone through the bars so the witch thought he was still too skinny to eat. After many days she grew fed up and decided to eat him anyway. She asked Gretel to help her prepare a big oven. The witch made some bread to go for a supper and when the oven was hot she put it in to cook. When the bread was ready the witch asked Gretel to lift it out to cool. But Gretel was clever too. She pretended she couldn't reach the tray, and when the witch bent down inside the oven, Gretel gave her a great shove and closed the door. 
And that was the end of the witch. Now Gretel released Hansel, and together they set off once more to try and find the way home. After all, their adventures, fortune finally smiled on them, and he soon found a path home. The father was simply overjoyed to see them again. And what you might ask of their mean mother? Well, the poor cutter had not had a happy moment since he left the children in the forest. He had become so miserable that she decided there was no living with him. The day before Hansel and Gretel returned, she had up sticks and left. That served her right, didn't it now?